design table is a knowledge advisor function in TIA. So if you go to the knowledge advisor toolbar, you'll start, it looks like an Excel spreadsheet. So it's called design table. So I'm going to select design table. And let's call it something descriptive. Design table one, that sounds descriptive to me. So here's the deal. When you get to this, this point, and I don't like it that Katia does this, but I guess it is what it is. Uh, what you've got to be careful with here is make sure that you check the second button. It's always going to have the first button checked that I, that I can remember. It says create a design table with current parametric values, which are the values that are already in the model. You can create a design table from a pre-existing file, but I don't want to do that. I've never done that in my whole life. So I've always done the second option. So let's hit OK. Now, here's the point where it goes, what parameters do you want to use? And this is when you just start thinking, what parameters are, are going to be in my family of parts? So let's just begin with sketch one. And I can filter down to lengths. I want it to. So I want my radius in there. I try to do this in order of the ones that are most important. So I've got my radius there, the uh, which is this. I've got my height. Let's do that one. I'm put that one in there too. Uh, let's go next to bold circle pattern. I don't want to filter to length. Let's go integer. So there's angular number. That's the number of instances. So I want to put that in there. That's the number of instances in my bolt circle. Hole. Let's look at how I want my radius in my hole so I can filter down the length. There's my radius. I want that in there. Ooh, hole. Number of instances. Oh, hole. Yeah, the hole is my bolt circle. So that radius is my bolt circle diameter. Nothing else on pattern. Center hole, we'll put that in there. So center hole will be a uh, diameter. So these would be the, the columns of my design table, the parameters that I will be updating. Let's do the fillet radius too. So notice how I'm able, by selecting on the tree, and also kind of manipulating the filter types you can you can you can go through and let's also do the fillet turn on or not so i can come here with fillet activity and put whether i want to have the fillet turned on or not so what are the parameters in order that i'm looking at the radius of the flange the height of the flange the number of instances of my bolt circle pattern, the bolt circle diameter, the center hole diameter, the fillet radius, and the fillet, whether we have a fillet or not. Those are going to be all part of my design table. So I hit OK. It's going to create, an, hopefully, an Excel spreadsheet. And so that's what this is showing. So I just got to make sure you save it to a directory where you have rewrite privileges. So notice it is doing it as an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to hit save. Just remember where it's saved. It does create an associative link to that. And if you move, it's going to cause issues. So here's my design table. And so notice. It's not very descriptive names, but these are, there are ways to clean that up. I won't get into that today, but these are the parameters that I selected. All right, so let's begin. So uh, I want to add some new instances to this. So this is what it's sitting at right now. So I've got a, I've got a, um, four inch, four inch radius. I've got a four inch radius. 
dam four inch radius for the shaft. The shaft is two inches high. There's eight instances around my boat circle pattern. The boat circle uh, diameter, the boat circle radius, I should say, is three inches. Uh, the fillet is one inch in radius. And the fillet is turned off. So what I can do is I can go to my table. So I can go edit table. So there's my Excel spreadsheet. So I can start entering values here. So I can, let's say I want one that has a radius of five, height of two, six instances of my hole. And if you can't remember what they are, you can drag this out and to kind of help remember, like, what is this? Radius, radius, radius. I think that's bolt circle. So I just need to make sure that this is going to be working well with this value. So let's make, let's leave that at three. What is this one? Well, that's my center hole diameter. Put that at two. Uh, fill it radius and we'll leave it at true. true now let's do another one six radius remember that's radius even though so this would be 12 diameter we'll make this three that's my height number of holes will be 10 from my both circle pattern uh, boat circle diameter, we're making four radius. It's boat circle radius, I guess. I'm going to make this three inch. Uh, one inch radius, and we'll turn the fillet off on this one. Okay. So I want to save. So there's three new instances in my family. So I'm going to save. And I'm going to shut down Excel. It's going to go through and do some calculating. It's going to say, hey, it calculated and updated. And then you've got your three instances sitting here. Let's say I want this one to be active. So I can double tap it. And then it updates to that one. That instance. Go back to my design table here, which is the Knowledge Advisor Workbench. Let's say I want this one. So when I double tap this one, you should see the fillet go away. I want to pick that and hit apply and see behind the scenes what happened. The fillet went away. Because this one is active now. If I go behind the scenes, hit apply, notice it updates. So now I've got a family of parts based off the parameters in the original model that I can update and just pick which one I want to go with. Imagine this was a, your bolt assignment. And so you had a family of, of bolts with a certain diameter, a certain number of threads per inch, certain length, and you can just update and pick which bolt you want without having to model three separate bolts. You just model one bolt, make it very, very, very robust, and then you're good to go.